All right, so what I want to do here is show how to build a spreadsheet to look at compound interest where you can have the initial information typed out above. And when you change something up here, like if somebody says, no, let's start with $2,500 and you retype the 2,500, it updates the whole spreadsheet. So eventually I'm going to show you how to make that everything update. Um, and like the 2% of somebody says, well, what about 2.5%? I just go in and type 2.5 and it updates the sheet. Um, as, far, as far as rounding, we all make rounding mistakes. And one nice thing about a spreadsheet is you can tell it to round all of the numbers for you by just clicking um, like the decrease or increase decimal button. So here I might say to show me just two decimal places and then it rounds correctly for me, which is kind of nice. And maybe I wanna see the dollar sign there too. So the spreadsheet can handle rounding. So what I want to show you is how to set up something like this so that we can change the amounts and it'll update the spreadsheet. Um, so let's do it. Well, well, excuse me, will it be pretty much the same on Excel? Yes, it's identical on Excel. Okay, thank you. Yep, so the steps I'm going to do here are identical on any spreadsheet. So uh, first I'm gonna type some labels like uh, P for principal. So I'm just gonna type P equals and hit enter. Um, my, my R, I'm gonna make a note more specifically that it's an annual percentage rate, APR. And then um, I'm gonna put in what's called N next. And I'm gonna type some numbers in for these and then put a little more detail. So let's suppose I'm gonna start with $1,000 like we were before. For the APR, uh, spreadsheets understand the percent symbol, so I can just type two and the percent symbol. Oops. What the heck? There it is, okay. And then for N, I'm just gonna do once a year. So the N here is the, the number of times you get interest per year. Um, so that's uh, interest. And so it's important when you're using a spreadsheet that numbers go in cells by themselves and comments about those numbers goes in, go in other cells. Um, that way you can use the numbers that you typed. Okay. Uh, if you type the numbers and the words in the same cell, then they're useless. So this right here, I can make a note is my starting amount. And if somebody wasn't sure what APR meant, I could type that in here next to it. Percentage rate. So anytime I have a spreadsheet, uh, I'm gonna have at least a little note like this in cell A2, uh, along with whatever numbers I need. Okay, so this is like my starting information. Then I'm gonna skip a row down here. I'm gonna put time, and then I'm gonna put uh, amount. And I'll go through the easy way to type this and then the better way to type it. So as far as time, we're going to have a zero and then a one and a two. And the meaning of those numbers might change a little bit depending on how many interest periods I have in a year. Like, am I getting interest 12 times a year because it's monthly? Am I getting interest four times a year because it's quarterly? Am I getting interest 365 times a year because I'm getting it daily? Uh, so that's what this N tells me, and I'll show you how to use that. So the simple version of the formula is just equals, and then I just type my numbers, even though they're already on the screen. 1,000 times parentheses, 1 plus 2% as a decimal, and then I close the parentheses and use Shift-6, that hat, the correct key, to say the next thing is my power, and my power is always the time. So this is the easy way to do it, but it's not the best way. Okay, right, so here's my P right there, here's my R right there, and then here's my T for time right there. And the T for time comes from whatever row my time is in. So I just click to get that. And it does a calculation. It also says, hey, do you wanna auto fill? Now, Excel doesn't do this, so I'm going to say no. If I were in Excel, then what I would do is click back on this formula I typed, 
and grab that magic button on the bottom right. Notice my cursor changes from the pointer to the plus. Click there and then drag it down and it should make those calculations. And if I had gone down for time is three and filled it down one more time, you should see that $1,061.21. So that's kind of the way we did it with the calculator. The benefit on the spreadsheet was I really only had to type the formula once, hit enter, click back on it, and then fill it down as far as I want. Now I'm not filling it down farther than three because I don't have any numbers here. And no number means it'll calculate with a zero. So if it sees no number there, it says, ah, it must've been a zero. But I really wanted like a four and a five. Um, and maybe like the computer eventually asks, what about 10 years later? What about 20 years later? So this will make that calculation for me. Now I prefer these are dollars and cents. So to make them dollars and cents, you just highlight them and hit the dollar and cents button, the currency button. And then it cleans it up nice so you can avoid rounding error. How's that seem so far? Does um, Excel have that um, where you can make it look nice like that, the dollars and cents? It does, yeah. If you look at the top bar of Excel, you'll see it there. So let me whip out Excel. So if I had, um, let's see, where was I down here? So again, oops, I can't count. So I type it the same way I did here, equals a thousand times parentheses, one plus my rate, 0 0.02, and then close the parentheses, raise it to the power. You got to get the parentheses in the right spot for these. And then I click on the power once I have that uh, caret there. Okay. And then once I fill that down, and I can fill it down as far as I want, it treats empty things as zeros, but I can go back in and put a three, four, five, 10, 20, 50, 100, any numbers I want, and it'll calculate. To get them to look nice, I just highlight them and then there's a, a dollar sign button. And when you point to it, it says it calls it the accounting format here. Okay, thank you. It makes it pretty for me. Yes, thank you. Okay, so, so that was the easy way to make the formula happen. What I want to have happen is I want to automatically have it look up here to get the right principle. I want to have it look up here to get the right APR and to look up here and get the right number for N, which I'm starting off with one. Okay, so I'm just going to have to modify my formula a little bit to make that happen. So I'm going to delete all this and start over. So the, uh, a couple things I should fix is that thousand, I should probably use that currency accounting format right away to put the dollar in front. Uh, the percent, I put the percent symbol in there, which is fine. So for the amount here, it's close to what I did before. I have to start with an equals, but instead of typing a thousand, I'm gonna click on a thousand. That, and it says, hey, you clicked on cell B1. Yeah, so basically I'm saying, hey, look in B1 for that starting amount, times parentheses, just like before, one plus, and then I click on my interest rate, and it says, hey, you clicked on cell B2. Yep, that's where the interest rate lives, close parentheses, and then, oops, uh, I'll come back and use the N in a minute, and then I raise it to the power, however much time has gone by. Now, the problem with the way I have it written right now is this power A6 right there, that's gonna change to a one and then a two and then a three. That's cool, I want it to change. But my thousand dollars and my 2%, they're not gonna change. They're always in row one and row two. So anytime you have numbers that are always in the same spot, so my principal is always in the same spot, my APR is always in the same spot, but my years are always in a new spot. 
to tell the computer to make sure you always look in the right spot up there, then you need to put a dollar sign in front of the row number. So I need that to read B dollar sign one, which says the dollar sign says always look in row one for that amount. And the APR is always in row two, so I got to squeeze a dollar sign in there. And that tells the computer always look in row two for that, that value. And then for the year, the year is always in a different row, so I don't want any dollar signs there. So that's the only differences in the formula. Instead of typing a thousand, I say, okay, go up here and get a thousand. And then I make a little note to the computer, don't mess with that one there. For the interest rate, same thing. It's always in row two. So I say, hey, always look in row two. And that's what the dollar sign tells the computer. And then the A6 doesn't get a dollar sign because that changes. So the rule when you use formulas like this on a spreadsheet, is if the number only lives in one spot, it's got to have a dollar sign either by the number or the letter. So sometimes people might do a dollar sign B, dollar sign one. I'll explain that difference later, but for now. You have to put that in the very first um, column and then it will know. Yeah, so, in the, so all that has to go in the first column. So I'm just going to do this all over, right? So to make this work, right, to use the numbers above, I go equals and I click on the number I want, times one plus, click on the other number I want, close parentheses, raise to the power, click on the other number. Before I fill it, I have to double check that numbers that are always in the same spot have a dollar sign in the right place. So if a number doesn't change, like it's always $1,000 or always 2%, that needs a dollar sign. If the year, if something changes like the year, it doesn't need a dollar sign. Okay. So once I have that in there, I hit enter, then I click back on it, and then I fill it down and it should work just like before. Yay. Now notice when I typed the formula the first time, I had B1, B2, and then A6. And when the computer copied it down to the next row, because of the dollar signs, it left the one alone and it left the two alone, but it changed the A6 to an A7. Why A7? Because I want the new year. So whenever you move a formula with the fill button, the computer is gonna wanna change letters or numbers unless you tell it not to. And the cool thing about this version of the sheet is if somebody says, well, let's check this out for $3,000 and 1%, then it automatically updates everything below, which is wicked cool. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take this a step farther. Um, so uh, I'm going to make another sheet just like this one, but I'm going to do it for monthly compounding. And here's the catch on monthly. I'm going to write this down in the notebook before I do it here. Page, please. Stop working. Give me a sec to reboot it. And there we go. All right. So what we just did was if we collect interest yearly, but sometimes you can collect interest monthly. So other interest periods. So uh, you could collect interest yearly, just once a year, but you could also collect interest monthly. That's a possibility, which is 12 times per year. You could collect interest quarterly, which would be four times per year. And there's a ton of other options. I'm only going to go over one more for now. You could kind of collect interest daily, which would be 365 times per year. And the catch on that comes from our formula, the simple version of our formula, which is one plus uh, the rate here. Um, or actually even before that with the I equals P R T. So if somebody says, hey, the annual percentage rate 
is 2%, then, and let's say I'm starting with $1,000 again, then for this interest amount there, I would take 1,000 times the 2% as a decimal, and if one year went by, I would put a one there. If two years went by, I would put a two there. What if only a month goes by? What about one month later? Well, one month is what part of a year? Well, it's roughly one twelfth of a year. And if we put these two things together, if you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators, right? Multiply the denominators. So essentially what I have for month, for one month, would be that $1,000 times my interest rate divided by 12. Why divided by 12? Because there's 12 months in a year. If it were quarterly, then I would divide by four for each quarter. If it were daily, I would divide by 365 for each day. So if I were collecting daily interest, Uh, on a thousand dollars, then the form, the part of the formula would look like one thousand times my interest rate of uh, what two percent, and then if only one day went by, a day is one out of three hundred and sixty-five in a year, and if you put those together, you get 0 0.02 divided by three sixty-five. So once you divide by three sixty-five, you get in this case a daily rate. When I took that interest rate 0.02 and I divided by 12, that gives me a monthly rate. And credit cards do that. On a, uh, a credit card um, sheet at the end of each month, you'll see things like what's your average uh, daily balance and what's your monthly amount of interest. So with those things in mind, the formula changes just a little bit for compound interest. And this is what I'm gonna show you how to plug into a spreadsheet next. So it's kind of similar to before, you've got your future amount is gonna be equal to whatever you started with times one plus your rate. It's gonna go here. And then, so this right here is always the rate. And this right here is always the number, I should say total number of interest periods. Right, in other words, how many times did you get to collect interest is what goes up there. And so the catch now is that if we do, if we, if we split it up into different parts of a year, we have to take our rate and divide by the number of times per year we get interest. So N is the periods per year. And then we have to adjust the exponent by taking that number of times a year and multiplying by the number of years. So like if two years went by for monthly, two times 12 would be 24 times that I collected interest. So the power always, always has to be the total number of times. So this is the new compound interest formula. And this works for, it doesn't matter whether it's monthly, yearly, daily, quarterly, this always works. So I'm gonna plug in this formula into the spreadsheet. And in order to do that, there's two things we under, need to understand that we have this, what we call a periodic rate here, and that the power is always the total number of periods that have gone by. And this is part, this, the last part of the, home, the lesson and then the homework goes over this. So let's do that in a spreadsheet. All right, so I'm gonna start off with a new sheet. And just like before, I'm gonna have a place where I type my principal, whatever amount that's gonna be. So maybe I'm gonna start with $2,000 this time. And then I always wanna know what my APR is. Let's suppose that's 3% this time. And 
n let's do monthly and so n is always interest periods per year how many times do you get interest each year we need to know that um, remember this is annual percentage rates And this is our starting amount. So I really don't need these extra notes here, except it's nice to remind myself what this N means. But really all I need is that information. I know, but will you do it for now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. So I'm not gonna call this years or months or anything. I'm just gonna call this column time. And the time depends on what that number is. So. If that's a 12 right there, then my time is in months. If this was like a four here, then my time would be in quarters. So this, this right here, so we could put like a little key over to the side here for N. Um, if you have one, that's yearly. If you have four, that's quarterly. If you had a 12, that's monthly. 365, oops, could be daily. You could collect interest every minute if you want to. You just need to know how many minutes are in a year. So those are the options for N for the moment. So time depends on N, and then my amount goes here. And it's really almost exactly like what I did a minute ago. So my time is always something like zero, one, two, three, or four. And in this case, the one would be a month because N is 12. If N was 365, then one would mean one day. So this key kind of helps interpreting what these time numbers mean. Otherwise here, I make the formula like I did before. Always start in the zero row equals, click on your starting amount, times parentheses, one plus, now here's where I got to get tricky. The rate is really the APR divided by that number of times per year. That's the new rate. That's called the periodic rate. It's the APR divided by N. Close parentheses, raise that to the power, and my time column is always designed to be the total number of periods that have gone by. So I don't need to do anything special there. Now, before I fill this formula down, I want to ask myself, which of these numbers are fixed in one spot and which of these numbers change? So the only number that changes here is the time. So the A6 gets no dollar signs, but everything else has got to have a dollar sign. Dollar sign because that's always in row one. Dollar sign because the APR is always in row two. And a dollar sign here because the number of times per year is always in row three. But N can change. I mean, it can. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and, and I'll, I'll change that in a minute to go over what that means to change. But the number is always located in that row. Right. I, I understand. But I'm just yeah. saying at the beginning of a problem, it could be like um, four. Yeah, we wouldn't usually in a particular problem, we're not going to change it from four to 12. No, I mean at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get that in the beginning, right? So this is information up here I expect to get in the beginning. Okay. All right, so that's my formula. If I did it right, then I should be able to fill it down. Now, before I fill it down, I'm just going to extend this down to uh, 12 months. Oops, that's the wrong button. Okay, so I want to see up to 12 there. And then I should just be able to click back on this and fill it down and it should give me the right answer. And let's make it pretty. But I should check that that's the right number. Now, I kind of think it's the right number because remember with the daily interest, um, uh, let's see, is that, no, that's not gonna, I didn't do a calculation like this yet with you guys, I guess. All right, so to double check that, I'm just gonna kind of use the, cap, the spreadsheet as a calculator. So that number right there should buy my initial amount, 2,000. So I'm just gonna type the numbers. 
times one plus my interest rate, 0.02, split into twelfths, and then raised to the power of 12 because 12 months have gone by. Right? So that's the simple version of it that I would type into a calculator. I want to make sure it matches the fancy version I did with all those cell references. And I got a different number. What went wrong? Okay, so I messed something up. What did I mess up? Oh, I'm using 3%, not 2%. Make sure you type the right numbers in. Am I using $2,000? Yeah, okay. Okay, now it matches. So, uh, so often when I do a complicated formula like this one with all these dollar signs and one that doesn't have a dollar sign, I'm gonna do like a, just a regular plain calculator calculation to make sure it works. So I just confirm that I, I did it right down there. So it's always a good thing to do in a complicated situation like this. Now, if, if I change what N means, that changes what time means. So because N is 12 here, my time column is really months one month, two months, three months, four months, five months. If I change to quarterly, so if I put a four here, then I'm now not counting by months, I'm counting by quarters, right? So four quarters would be one year later. Notice the $2,060. A minute ago, I had $2,060.83 for yearly or uh, monthly compounding. So I'm just calling this time for now because what that time means depends on what this number is. What if I put a one here for N? What does my time column mean? One year. Year. Yeah, years, yeah, exactly. What if I put a 365 in here for N? What Daily. Is, these are days, yeah, one day, two day, three day. So if I, if I had 365 here, and I wanted to see what happens at the end, according to the way I've done this table, uh, for the 365, I'd actually have to get to 365. So if I just type a 365 there, delete this, and fill this down, this will tell me what happens at the end of 365 days. And so notice, if I collect interest daily, I get $2,060.91. When I was doing it uh, monthly, I had 83 cents. So is, is collecting daily better than monthly? A tiny little bit. That's only because this is a small amount of money and a year is a short amount of time. But it turns out you're always better getting interest more often. It's just not a huge amount better. But money is money. I'll take more money most days for the right reason. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording there.